Hello there and welcome back to my garden. Now if like me you're a novice gardener or perhaps a gardener with more experience who's willing to share their expertise in the comments I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. All you need to do is to hit the red button mark subscribe and that means next time you open the YouTube app on your phone your tablet or your computer one of my videos will be waiting for you. I'm hoping to be able to cut something from my brand new cutting garden every week of the year. But I've come across a bit of a problem. My tulips are ready to burst into flower, but they're only this tall. So what is the problem? And according to Google, it can be a situation where you haven't had enough rainfall before the tulips come into bloom. But we have had so much rain this spring that I don't think that's the problem. So do you know why my tulips are so short? If you do, let me know in the comments. So these tulips are the first year of planting. I bought my bulbs from Sarah Raven. Some of them had gone mouldy before I planted them. So I don't know whether that has been a country. So I don't know whether that has been part of the problem. But they do look fabulous. Isn't that an amazing bloom? So I'm going to cut myself two of these and see whether I can showcase them in a vase to enjoy indoors. Now it's been a while since I've been in the garden and I filmed much of this video on the 21st of March last week, the first day of spring. I was all set to tidy up the kitchen. You'll spot me wearing my kitchen apron and a pair of rubber gloves. And the sun was shining and I thought I really ought to get out into my cutting patch and do a little bit of weeding before the weeds get out of control. So what I'm doing here is I've taken off the flower pots which I had used to protect my marines over the winter months. And I'm pleased to report that they're putting on some good growth. So they needed to be put in a, in a somewhere that was bright sunshine. The recommendation was up against a wall. So I don't have a wall in this part of the garden, but I thought with my sunny south facing garden here up against the kitchen wall, that it would be the good place to plant them. And I think I'm going to have some success. I will say though, I did have a pot of oriental lilies, which I'd planted out in the garden next door to these marines, and I can't see any sign of them. So here I am doing a little bit of dead heading. The plants I'm cutting now were some sort of herb. I don't know what they were. It looked like mint, but it didn't have the scent of mint. And also some of the very tall daisies, the Michaelmas daisies, are they? Very tall, white with a yellow center. So I'm just uh, cutting away the, the dead bits in order that everything just looks a little bit neater. So these were how I had had my marines protected over the winter months. And underneath these four pots are my dahlias. So I'm just going around the back of the pots because I've got some scabious to deadhead and also the stems from my sedum and they all seem to have survived quite nicely over the winter months. So with the success of my marines, I'm really hoping for something special underneath these pots, but I can see absolutely nothing. I did think that perhaps I might have seen some new growth shooting up. But even when I search through the top surface of the soil, I cannot see a single thing. So I'm going to be adding dahlias onto my shopping list for this year. I bought these plants at our local street market and I think actually I've got the dwarf variety. So next time I'm going to make a mental note of buying the full size dahlias because the purpose of my garden is to be able to use flowers indoors to cut them for indoors. So I'm looking for anything tall. So whereas my husband gardens for ground cover, 
as well as wildlife interest, colour, form and texture in his foliages. I want things that are going to be tall. If I'm honest, I don't really think I am a proper gardener. I enjoy cutting the flowers and arranging them, but I need to keep on check with my weeds. And I thought if I just come out and do 15 minutes, 10 minutes every so often, hopefully I'll keep everything under control. So I'm using my trowel here just to dig up my little bits of grass, the sort of tufts of grass that have, seem to be my main problem weed at the moment. I really don't enjoy digging holes for my plants and I'm not particularly interested in growing from seed and doing all that separating and transplanting. I want an easy option garden which is going to be bursting full of flowers June, July and August. So what I'm doing, I'm doing the no dig method. So you can see I've put some uh, broken paving stones through the flower beds so that to keep my treading on the beds and my compaction of my soil to an absolute minimum. Now, looking at the amount of growth I've got on my daffodils and tulips, I am, well, a tiny dis bit disappointed. In fact, I am quite disappointed in terms of the success rate of my tulips and daffodils. Many of my daffodils seem to be growing blind. So I would appreciate your comments on that. Why have they come up blind? And as I said at the beginning of the video, a lot, well, I think all of the tulips seem to be very, very short. So perhaps with the coming weeks, they might get a little bit taller. But again, the idea was, I don't want to enjoy the flowers in the garden. I want to be constantly cropping and bringing them indoors. So what I'm doing here is transplanting some hellebores. You may have seen a video in the autumn time when I took some of these stinking hellebores out from my front garden to put them in the back garden. And I left some in the front, which my husband then decided that he didn't want in the front garden. So he planted them in the back for me. But he had misunderstood my vision for the garden when I wanted swathes of planting and not dots and pairs of things. But he decided to make a pair of plantings underneath the maple tree that you can see at the back of the shop there. So it's taken me uh, a couple of months to to um, replant the hellebores where I actually want them. So I did say I didn't enjoy gardening because I'm not very good at digging holes. Part of that problem may be because I got the wrong tool, but I just wanted to use the trowel because it was to hand. Of course, I know I should have used a garden spade, but I'm equally as ineffective with a garden spade as I am with a trowel. So I've replanted or repositioned these hellebores. They're stinking hellebores and they're putting on some new growth. You can see at the front that they've got some of the fresher green growth, but they're not in flower. And I think I've had these, a friend from Flower Club gave them to me. I've had them at least a year, I would say. And I've noticed that other people's stinking hellebores have all are flowering at the moment. So I don't know whether because I've transplanted them, they're going to take a little while to catch up or whether they just don't like where they are. So while I've got hellebores on my mind, I'm going to plant out the hellebore that I bought. Um, probably was it just before Christmas, I've been having it on my, I had it on my patio table, sort of making an instant garden on my patio table. And I've also got the hellebore that a friend had grown for me. And that was sitting in one of the big tubs I just had um, resting on the soil during the summer months. I took over this section of garden in July last year. So I was too late for everything. So that's where my sort of love of instant gardening has come from. And I think probably that's the way I'm going to go forward. If I can buy my flowers locally in town, I'm going to choose the ones that look tall and just plant them throughout the year. So I should have a running variety of my own color, form and texture to enjoy momentarily in the garden and then for a week or so in a vase indoors. So do you have fancy having a closer look about what's been going on in the garden? So starting off with the Narcissi, I chose varieties put together by Sarah Raven. And she said that these were good perennial varieties and she had had them growing in her garden for about 10 years. So you can see that there's a few stems there I've cut three or four stems to enjoy indoors. And there's an example of all my very short tulips. 
So this was the hellebore from my friend that I've transplanted and then the white potted hellebore which has been sitting on my patio table for the last few months. So I may not have any flowers on my stinging hellebore but I do have a ladybird which is quite nice to see. And the daffodils right at the back near the fence They've all come up blind, but perhaps they're too shaded. I don't know. And then these tulips here, you can see that the flower head just seems to be about ready to burst into bloom. But they were just so short. So if you do know what's going on, let me know in the comments. One success has been the transplanted lavender from the front garden. There's some new growth there to see. And off to the left, this is ragwort. You might consider it to be a weed, but my husband's a keen wildlife gardener and the flowers attract the cinnabar moth. And that's Maybe. our dog, keeping an eye on things. This bit of the garden coming up is just outside the kitchen window beneath the shade of the lilac tree and the bay which is being cut down in height. So once we cut down the bay tree it then revealed the rambling rose and the climbing rose on the fence which have never really come to anything so I'm quite pleased to see there's lots of new growth here and hopefully I shall have some blooms to enjoy from July onwards. So this is the lilac tree which ever since we moved into the house 25 years or so ago has been on the point of death but um, it does seem to have sprung a few more shoots coming direct out of the trunk rather than the main head of the shrub. The so beautiful flowers can be quite tricky indoors. If you are going to cut the lilacs from your garden you need to take off all the leaves and then make a slit up into the woody stem and that should give you a better vase knife. So here are my tulips, these are the last set of tulips that I planted. Instead of planting them in clumps I decided perhaps I ought to be more flower farmer-esque and plant them in lines but now the lines a little bit, look a little bit odd compared to the clumps of other plantings I've got. These native geraniums here, they're going to come out of the garden. I don't like the, the flower on these, it's a bit insipid. But I have got one patch of the native geraniums that I do like, so hopefully they'll spread around a little bit. So I've picked myself a vase of flowers. I've just put them in this little charity shop vase from Denby. So I've got my two tulips you saw me cut. I've got some Gilda Rose Viburnum opulus is the blossom from my husband's side of the garden and so I've got some grape hyacinths and some blue forget-me-nots too as well as a soft little um, fluffy foliage which I like stachys I was going to say I can't remember the name of it but it's stachys so I'm arranging these in a windowsill vase or a mantle vase a sort of constant sprite-esque looking vase and I've got some crunched up chicken wire inside. I've had this chicken wire um, for years and years and years, so many years that the wire is starting to rust now and degrade a little bit, but it fits quite nicely inside this container. So I'm getting my two tulips in first. They're quite short, the tulips, but as you know, tulips will continue growing once they've been cut. So they should get a little bit more length and they should start to grow and search for the light. With the hellebore there, there's a little bit of damage on the, the petals, so I'm just cutting that out, making sure that I'm putting the flower's best foot forward and showcasing their beauty, rather than your eye being drawn to the bits that have been nibbled by insects or just died off and gone over. So once I've got my main flowers in, I'm going to fill out with a little bit of that greenery, that stachys, it's got a nice fluffy texture to it. I'm taking off the lower leaves because they all end up inside the water and I don't want them rotting off and shortening the life of my flowers and then giving them a recut so I've got a fresh cut to the stem and that just aids the uptake of water and then I'll fill in with my native geraniums 
little pink flower so this is the geranium I do like quite like the little flower on that and then I'll add in some of my forget-me-nots and then finish off with a bit more blue with those grape hyacinths Thank you so much for joining me in today's video and if you'd like to have more flower arranging tutorials don't forget to check out the playlist for my spring flower arrangements and if you love all things flower arranging why don't you consider becoming a member of my youtube membership group you get early access to my monday uploads which you can watch advert free and also you get free access to my monthly online flower arranging club that's all for me for now and I'll see you again another time.